<clears throat> yeah, back at it again, so guys, Spence, you know what time it is. I got the Juice Man in the building. Yo, yo. Carrie, they in the building. Oh, man. Juice, it's been so long since I did a podcast, bro. Man, happy Sunday to you, man. Happy bro. Sunday to you, man. I'm, I'm, I gotta, I gotta get into this music, man. You, I know you, you against J. Cole, man. I don't know how you against that, man. I'm not against it. Said my man put out some mid, man, but I ain't know, fam. Off season. He like the kinfolk that you ask what they got That's going right. on what the you weekend. Think hey, you heard this job. Platinum. Off season. Let's work. Hey. Plotting my escape, this game riding niggas fake Got a couple M's hiding in the safe Imagination turned a Honda in the rave I was doing 80 on it in the state Trying to make it back before my class dark Country nigga never seen a pass for it Till I popped off and got a bag for it Now I'm at the garden sitting half court Watching Junior catch it off the bad boy Feel yeah, nigga never seen nothing Except a fucking triple bean jumping Good dope, leave a fiend crumping Made it out, it gotta mean something Either you gon' hustle or that nigga Uncle Sam got your ass re enlist six murder scene it's not going to be I'm not going to say my favorite player is in the league right now is Carmelo. Yeah. He might be my favorite of all time. But as time go by, it's been better players. Right. So I respect what you did back then and I liked your game back then. Yeah. So that's why I say this. What about this one? Where, where you had that man Dame on the top? Ain't nothing I want more. Ain't nothing I want more. I, ain't, I told you when I first came here, I said I ain't come here to waste my time. I came here. They gave us a chance to get in like we asked for, and that's that's what we're here to do. Yeah, nigga, two six. Job still ain't Straight done, up. but I, I said, you, you know what I'm here for. Back on top, punching the clock, clutching sanity. I got more cribs than habitat for humanity. Shit profound, we propagating more profanity. Paid off collections for recollections of calamity. The shit pop off, I learned to duck under the canopy. Till it cool off, they murdered a the nigga right in front of me. Told him to come off his chain for trying to floss. Died over a cross, just like the start of Christianity. When I was a boy, the teacher often reprimanded me. Thought it was toys, it was a clock this nigga handed me. I busted the trees, was barely strong enough to squeeze. Bullets traveled through leaves and probably killed somebody randomly. Ran to the crib and played it off amongst the family. Nightmare scenes, the police finally apprehended. Me. Woke up screaming, seen a demon had his hand on me Still swore the scar on my arm for way he branded me Like a cute dog, my niggas burning with the mute off Loud pack, smoke through the cracks, I catch a contact Triggering a paranoid mindset, now I'm back Teetering between enlightened and insanity Now that I'm rich, I feel nobody understanding me All I can do is cut the mic on, holler at you Can't let the fame scare me off for speaking candidly All them niggas that sold cane, they started singing like Danity Now I'm left here paid like I plan to be damned yeah. It might not be great, but I really feel like it's it's a good it's a good album. Like yeah. I could listen to it. I won't be dying in the car if a nigga just banging it. Yeah. But yeah, I'd be like, hey, stay up. Like you found a sleep yeah. over there, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but that's calling in himself. Like, cause you listen to that coming that back from a football game at two o'clock in the morning from Dallas. Uh. You talking to a different cat, but nah, that's definitely probably not what I want. I want listening, uh, driving a bus home. No, I don't listen to music while I drive a bus home. Nobody does that. But uh, nah, that's definitely not what you want when you're trying to uh, trying to stay up on the road. I think I saw a tweet um, that says J Cole makes music for grown people. And, I saw that too, and I f couldn't agree with it more. Like, cause the kids, and you got to think, I'm around the kids. So I'm really like all this young shit that's coming up. Like I'm hearing it day in, day out. I'm trying to understand it. I'm trying to see how they feel it. I'm trying to see how they connect to it. It's still a disconnect for me because I'm just it's young shit. I feel like this this statement should have a comma and say grown ups who enjoy music with substance. Yeah, because but I, I think mean, some people think, take that. I as, think if you say grown folks, then I think you should already imply that we talking about people. You who know why I won't because. I like 
the big conscious music back when I was in college or back when it I was, was different there. then. But it's still conscious music now. Yeah, well, it was. It just sounded different. It was different, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. It's still the same the same material or the same subjects are coming right. out. Right. So for me, I said, like, what if I liked it, what J. Cole was talking? Because he been talking this shit. The, the one with Kevin Hart, uh, the Kevin Hart song. Oh, yeah. I love that, that album. That was, that was just hard. a couple years ago. Yeah. So it's not like I don't fuck with him. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just that. This album is just—I don't know, man. It's just for me, like it's cool. I—I I appreciated this album more than I did the KOD, the one you were talking about with Kevin Hart's uh, song on there. But now I was—I appreciated this album more because I felt like he didn't care too much about what anybody else thought about. It. He wasn't trying to do too many upscale beats. He wasn't really trying to keep you awake. He—he he went fully into this is who J Cole is. Let me get deep into my bag and. It's as good as Prime J. Cole as we gonna get. You know what I'm saying? So some people fall off as, towards the end of their careers, like Big Crit, he kind of losing people towards the end of his career. I think J. Cole, if you're a true fan of J. Cole, then I think that, that this album was like really good to you. Like I, I really, I really fuck with this one. I feel like this is like a, I feel like this album is like a LeBron year that's forgotten about like in his little midst of yeah. Everybody think about 2016 with the Cavs and stuff. Yeah. They don't really think about the years he didn't win right. with the Heat. They don't think about them years. Yeah. Some of them years was still great, like the years yeah. he got the championship. Right. I think this CD going to be one of them years. One of them years. Like it's going to be like 2015 from the year, the first year the Warriors won. You're going to yeah. forget, like, man, it yeah. went off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's going to be like because yeah. it don't hit hard like this. Right. That's that's, but it's J. Cole in itself, though. Like, I remember I texted you earlier in the week. I said, J. Cole is like a, a, a book. Even if it is a really good book, when the last time you read, went back and read a book twice? I Me and you don't read like that. Mm-mm. Like, and that's what J. Cole music sounds like. Yeah, it, it's something that, like, it's like, for me, J. Cole always been somebody that I go to when I, like, if the song, like, Run Away, come on, yeah. out of nowhere yeah. for me, I'm a, or uh, Rich Niggas. Yeah. I love shit like Trouble. Yeah. You know, I'm a J. Born Cole Center. fan. Born Center is his best See, album. I, I like, but as far as a compilation, I like Friday Night Lights the most. I think because, I think it's because that was my first year of college. Exactly. I'm glad you said Everything that. Everything that I like, that I, that I could relate to in there, because that's when I was, had my little iPad Nano. Yeah. Trying to get my music going. Yeah. Yeah, I know this before. One of my partners, one of my partners said uh, that Friday Night Lights is his favorite J Cole work. Yeah, and it was different. And I think it's got a lot to do with where you was at mm-hmm. in your life when you heard something. Especially when you hear you got a dollar in a dream and you finna go play Boise State. Yeah, and it's cold outside. Yeah, and you like, well, I'm not that prepared. But I got a dollar in a dream. So yeah. J Cole yeah. said it's over. It's all about where you at in your life, that where where music affects you the most. Now I, I, I'm with that. Like that's why I, I relate to like when I re, when I heard Yo Gotti. I remember when I first got on him freshman year. You know what I'm saying? Of college, I'm hearing Yo Gotti. Like who is this dude, man? And that's probably like the most influential year of your life. Yeah. Yeah. That first year you get out of high school, even if you go to college or not, that first year you get out of high school, you're going to kind of set your footsteps on this way or that way. Yeah, because that year changed my life. I went the opposite direction that I was supposed to go from that year. Out for just that year, but smoking and getting high to that music. Yeah. Big crits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But crit was real. Children, yeah. Listen to Children of the World in my crowd, Vic. Right. Know what I'm saying? Just riding around, rusting, smoking, just smoking in the dorm, listening to music, <laughs> playing 2K. That's when you start, and that's when I really start getting into music. Cause after I got kicked out the team, I had a lot of time on my hand. Yeah. So I got into music like that. So I think that's why people be around me. They be like, "Yeah, Kerry been on that music shit. It just wouldn't seem like it." No, nah, it wouldn't seem like that because you're the most contrarian person in the entire world, dog. Like, <laughs> come on, it. man. You, I heard it. Like, how you not like Drake? Like, you call this man a musical genius. When last time you heard Lemon Pepper freestyle other than Meek Me? Bro, you don't like Drake, so of course you wouldn't listen to it. No. But if you were a Drake fan, 
who, it, it, who I did. and it's a person that likes Drake. Lemon Pepper get played every once in a while. I, I just don't be around people. I guess that play that shit. Maybe you don't like people. That, they know you don't like Drake, so they don't play it. Nah, man, because he's he's universal. So he's a he's a music genius. He's yeah. a music genius. So when something come on, I be like, oh man, I like that. But then I'll be like, it ain't lasting ne till next week. It's not going to last. So his little three-piece dinner he threw out there, it ain't lasted. No, it didn't. He got his three number ones because of his name. But I tell you what, like, all right, so if you're in the he city. He's just getting all-star games because of his name. All right, so if you're in the city and a Drake record come on, you're not gonna, it's not going to throw you off. Like If they drop what's next. It's not gonna throw you All off. All I hear is that outside song by Mo Three when I'm in Dallas. Yeah, they play shit out of that. So emotional. Hey, when they sing come on. the fuck. Out yeah, of they that turned song, into bro. a whole like yeah, they, they turned into a church service, man. It's third Sunday. It turned into a church it's service. Casual man. Sunday. It's youth choir day, and it's daytime. I mean, I had those moments in the car because I'm in the car by my goddamn self. But uh, everybody can relate to this song. But sometimes I be looking at niggas like, say, bro. You're not stepping night and day. It's different though. It's so different. I tell you what, now, here's a, here's a, here's the a power of music though. Like the the feeling that people have, that you, that emotional feeling that them people be having, like it's really they be touching their soul. Like that's the same thing with church music though. You yeah. go into a church and, and somebody sing a certain song and that whole tug you the right way. What? It's gonna make you jerk you to tears, boy. Like like well, without question. Like uh, that's church. I guess for me, church music is gonna do that for you because. When I'm in the church house, I love being in there because it gives me a, a certain cleanse. Yeah. I don't get to go in You ready for that? Uh, yeah, but the music, I like when I hear a certain boy. But no, I'm just saying, like, the, the there's an emotional tag to it. Now, you take some people who don't go to church at all, ever. And so they getting that first, probably getting that first real emotional tug from a song before. It's probably is some folks ready to cry in the club when they hear that thing. Uh, you know, I've been, and shout out to everybody at Miracle Tabernacle. One time I had got in trouble in Coach Clyde, baby. I can't even take you serious. I was just saying, Coach Clyde, Coach Clyde, baby, we go to church because I ain't with the gym. So, you know, mom was like, this boy need to go to church. He need to go to your church. <laughs> just not go to your church. Hey, we need some strong shit, okay? <laughs> Because what my Jesus is doing ain't working. So he needs the extra strength Tylenol. Okay. He needs the extra strength. <laughs> so <laughs> so we go to it, and I went in the Miracle Tabernacle, and everybody was standing up the whole church. So I've been at Parvy my whole life. You could you could get away sitting down all day. Yeah. You could chill like that. They'll let you chill. Man, when you say, well, he, he put up Lil Wayne on the screen and came straight to me. Do you know who this is? I'm like, Yes. <laughs> Everybody look at it. Man, I'm telling you, bro, but I can feel the energy in there, like you said, yeah. with music. Like, they just, you know what I'm saying? That music get them going, and I wasn't feeling it like that. I'm right. just being real. I right. just came in there. Hey, when they when they play that, 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 that shout music, that's like the church nook if you book, boy. <laughs> hey, when I tell you, when I tell you, it's about uh, to Lord go Lord forgive me. Hey. Lord forgive me. Hey. But I ain't going to lie. With, with, that, with that flow story, jump it, and then... <laughs> like, like, hey, nobody in her stretch. Hey. I was like, it's some athletes. Hey. <laughs> Ain't nobody stretch. Ain't nobody straight the hamstring. Ain't nobody I mean, came up limit. Ain't no groins getting pulled. Hey, man. Man, Sister Martha Athletic, bro. We're going to have to pull on the red squad. Hey, hey seriously. Look, like, I said that scream. <laughs> I'm through. I'm off of it. I'm through. I'm through. I ain't going to play no more. I'm through. I'm through. Oh, man. I'm through. Oh, Shout shit. out to Paul if you back to church, man. Shout out to Macedonia Apostolic Church. Shout out to Pastor Brown. Diana, Texas. Man. Shout, shout out, out to East East Springfield. the trustees. East Springfield, Gilman, Texas. Yeah. Shout out to all the home churches out there. I wish I could go to church on Sunday. That's the first day of my work week. I went to work this morning. Yeah. It's tough, man. I need to go in that church house one more time, though. Now I miss I miss church. Yeah, That's one of the things that I, I think... I allowed quarantine to like get me off of. I wasn't going to church before quarantine, but 
that's one of the things I can kind of just assist that to, to Corona. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to throw church in that category too. Quarantine made everybody more, more angry and more mean to each other. Like, if you be in Dallas, boy, then, I'm talking about tension everywhere. Yeah. You be like, damn, why y'all so mad? Today? I noticed that about outside now. There's some people outside that's been wound up. Like, I was in Austin and I was outside, down on 6th Street. I was, it was a couple of fights, like two or three, just like brawls. I'm like, yeah, y'all boys is back. Y'all, y'all glad to be outside, ready for it. I was in, uh, shit, I was in Longview the other night. Yeah. Some tension going on. Yeah. Boys ready to get back, get back outside. I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. It's tense out here. I'm, I'm fishing. I turned into Coach Bones real quick. I said, nah. where is my whistle? I'm going to get my nah, ass the fuck out of here. Shit. <laughs> no. I'm telling you. As soon as, hey, as soon as the boys get to getting active, you turn back into your professional self real <laughs> fast. Like I, I was big, I was spent, big spent. I was chilling. As soon as some commotion got to go, Coach Boyd's in the building. Let me get the hook up out of here, man. I can't play around with y'all. It's different now. I feel like uh, I feel like Stanley. It's different now. Hey, I feel like Stanley. Not Stanley. Uh, what's what's uh, Red Daddy? Hey, hey, off of Friday when Red got knocked out and his daddy was right there when Devo knocked. <laughs> Oh, hey, I told you about coming down here with these people. <laughs> yeah, come on. Hey, man. No. I told you about coming down here and messing with these people. No. Get your ass in the car. I'm telling you, bro. It's a little different vibe than back in the day in my mama house with that little circle pig going. Yeah, it's... it's, it's what, what what made it that way, man? Is it Was it being was it being locked up for a year, quarantine? Uh, mm. They got something to do with it? Nah. Or was it just... Like... As far as I think, what it is is a um, this world thrives on negativity, and everything you gonna see that starts the news or whatever is gonna be negative. And once you start keep on seeing that, you might start turning to a negative, and then you start you got people out here that start becoming a little even playing field now to where. They job that was making them so much money might have done closed down. Right. So you got a couple of these Caucasians out here, the mad because these black people been surviving. Now it's turning into a little different thing out here. Yeah. Ain't too much liking it. But also, you got black people getting mad at black people for winning out here. So they low key snitching out here. Triple P's. One, yeah. two, threes. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of people made a up. big deal out of that. I like the one a thing, huge deal out of it. One thing I like about the other races in this world is they don't do that to each other on nah, nothing. Never. They don't care. It's like, oh, well, let's figure out how they got. Why, why do we get enjoyment out of trying to embarrass somebody so bad? I don't know. I really don't know. I really don't know. Cause it's like it's like that with everything, though. Like you, if you do something good, you'll get a like, you'll get a love, you'll get a comment, but you don't get shares or anything like that. And then as soon as you disagree with something or if you think something is bad, you can't wait to try to throw it up and put it in flames and get everybody to look and laugh and holler at it and like, yeah, this is. I terrible. see people comment on statuses. I be like, damn, I didn't know you were still my friend on this hoe. <laughs> Where you come from? Oh, you did something that caught your eye that you wanted to disagree and show your disagreement. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while since I heard from you. Yeah. And that number still 445. And it stay live. <laughs> it's getting the hoops, man. We just watched the Lakers lose game one <sighs> uh, against Phoenix. The uh, King. The King. And as a LeBron fan, there's no panic in my bones at all, because uh, if you if you've been around LeBron, you know any series that he thinks is gonna go five six, he always kind of gives them game one. He wants to see he wants you to get loose, he wants you to get comfortable so you can get in your own zone. I've kind of noticed this. Like there's a couple times with the Pacers where they went seven. There's a couple of times with Boston. There's a couple of times like like deep in his like East career. Like, there's a lot of times, if he don't think he can come out and sweep you, he really chilling in game one. Have we ever had a time where he's missed 43 games and went nah. into the playoffs? No, nah, you haven't had that time. Year 18? No, nah, you haven't had that. But, I mean, From a 7 seed would mean that you're going to have to play all better. Here's, here's what I'm seeing from Bron. 
I'm saying physically he think he feel all right. And he feel like his brain is probably enough to get through the chemistry problems that they have at the moment. Hmm. That's because, nice. and I, because his health is priority number one. So he took off a lot of games because he needed to. He felt like if he going to make this run at 36, at year 18, like you just said, like you just said, he needed he needed some more time. For sure. We're bro. looking at somebody that's played more games than almost anybody. You know he's saying three rims, so you, you got. Yeah, he is, sure. and he is dramatic. But I, I, here's what I, here's what, here's the thing I noticed, bro. And I'm, let me finish my point about what I think they're gonna do. And then I got another point okay. about Mike that I think people don't get a chance to really look into. Okay. But I bring bring me back to that. Don't let me forget. So anyway, with the Lakers, I realized LeBron. He always take game one off if he knows it's going to be a, a fight. Mm-hmm. He the seven seed playing the two seed. He knew emotions going to be high in game one. That's the younger team. Who, No matter how you look at it, he's still a big dog. No matter what seed the Lakers was in, he was still a big dog in the series. They're going to come out on fire trying to beat him. I think he really allows you to get your stuff off in game one. And then he allows you to – because, Juice, if you're cooking, you're a hooper, right? Mm-hmm. If you're cooking and you're feeling good about what you're doing – how deep in your bag you going? If you feeling it, it depends on how the game flowing. If I gotta, if I gotta cook to make us win, then I'm gonna keep going and everything. That's what I'm saying. Like but, if you, so, but I think what a lot of people do is when they start cooking, they get deep in their bag. They feeling this, okay? Let me go to that. Once it, like once somebody go off for thirty or forty, they don't do it the same way all night. So what LeBron doing is just sitting back and watching, and watching you cook. And then game two, they're going to make some adjustments. And you might win game two. But by game three, he done figured out everything you want to do. He done figured out when you get hot, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. And by by game two, it's usually got some clamps on it. And definitely by game three, the series done look a whole nother way. It's just done happened too many times in this career. So let me ask you this. We just lost 96 to 84. Right. That mean the team we played, we played good defense. That mean we only allowed them ninety six points. Correct. Say LeBron give us thirty. Say AD give us twenty five. That's fifty five points. What we getting that other fifty from consistently right now? Consistently, nobody. Where is our run though this year? Who is that? Is it's it Taylor. It's it's Horton Tucker. If it, you want to be real about it, that's who it needs to be. Is he giving it to us? Like, Horton Tucker needs to be the one when LeBron comes out the game and he needs to be driving and penetrating because he can really do it. I see. I like his guy. He got some, he got some triple, threat, triple double about him. But that's what scares me right now. See, when you got a system like the Suns are running, they're not worried about that. Yeah. Whoever getting it out, we know Booker, what he finna do. And we know what power – well, we, we don't know what power finna do because of the shoulder now. But they got a little system running, man. And my thing be, I'm just scared about the Lakers this year because I feel like we ain't got the chemistry going in like last time. I feel like that. I know it. it's easy to turn stuff on when you done did it this long, but yeah. we we not playing like, no. If we, I swear, if we was playing somebody like, I, I'd rather play the Clippers. I hate it. I cut you off right there, bro, but I, I do got a question. Mm-hmm. Last year when they were going into the bubble, they barely won any of the games going into it. Mm-hmm. And they looked bad, and the chemistry looked bad, and it was the same thing. Like, you know, they had a little warm-up games before the bubble, and they didn't really win any. And then as soon as the playoff series started, they lost to the Blazers game one, and then they figured it out. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is the same situation. I feel like that. They just. I feel like LeBron just had a little bit. I think. I think that car been in the shop a little too long, man. I think he was on that road a little bit. I think that shit was moving. Yeah. It just something scared me about. It. Look, man. Basketball, the older you get, man, it might seem like that, man. But look, man. He needed him about twenty games in that regular season to end it off, in my opinion. Yeah. Now, if he, I wouldn't be surprised if he do it. If you get to that goal, man. But, man, I'm just scared, man. I know Rondo. <laughs> I know Rondo, man. He brought a lot to the team. He brought a lot of playmaking that they look like they desperately need. They need an outside score. We were saying that off mic. Uh, 
you know, they needed like if they need if they were to get a third star, they needed Bradley Beal more than they needed Andre Drummond. And not that they had a choice in that because Washington wasn't coming off Beal. But they really need somebody like Kuzma or so somebody like win? KCP. Who you got winning? The series? The whole thing. Uh I'm still with the Lakers right now. Okay. I and got I Lakers. I, I got Lakers beating Milwaukee. And I, I, I think I think, I think TV gonna give us Lakers in, in this. That would be nice. I think I, I think that's too much for the NBA to hold back. I don't think I think when it comes down to it. Who you got favorite in it? Like even though if I believe too the Lakers will win, you think Vegas will have Brooklyn favorite? Oh yeah. Okay. Heavily. Heavily favorite. But I think I think the Lakers will beat them up. I think Drummond would, would eat. I think Anthony Davis would eat. And I think some guys will have to hit some shots. I mean that's just the Lakers are so two thousands basketball right now. I know, man. And that's and that's what's scary about picking the Lakers and liking the Lakers because they so they so old school right now. They so get it to Shaq. That's that's their best way of scoring is get it to AD and let him cook. Hopefully they double and then we can hit shots. And he is in the in my most Bart Scott voice ever. Soft. He is definitely soft. Bart well, Scott funny, but he be going a little too ham on the radio. <laughs> I be like, bro, calm down. Some people just get, speaking of radio or content like that, you Kwame versus everybody or you everybody? Ah. Uh, you, be better, you better hope you don't hear this. You better make sure. For you. I'll shoot Kwame big ass. I ain't even going to play with him. <laughs> I'm not even going to waste no time. I'm not going to fight him. The man seven foot. And is a professional athlete. I ain't no idiot. I ain't it's a big no country, bro. I'm, I'm gonna shoot that big country, bro. I feel. I have to. I feel like I don't want to though. Don't don't come at me, Kwame. I feel like it's for me. I just feel like it's if they weren't like doing this for twenty years, man. Like I can see, but he just wanted to. Damn, he got ejected. Mm. He just wanted to see, man, like how how it felt, like the other side. Y'all been giving it to me for twenty years now. I'm giving it back. How you? Yeah, no, nah, I can't. You can't say uh, a man that's experienced in something. You can't tell him if he's doing the right thing or the wrong thing because you don't know what it feels like. Right. Like some of us can't stand to be talked about. Like let somebody tag you when I'm posting Facebook with somebody ranking on you. You gonna go into another like level. Like you gonna get angry. You gonna be like, hey man, pull it down. Like you gonna be doing everything you can to get that embarrassment out for you. Yeah, yeah. And that's just on a long view basis. You know what I'm saying? That's just on a Facebook basis. Everybody's you know terrified of that. Nobody wants to be in that situation. But you take that and you multiply it by a million for the millions of people to hear you be talked about, laughed about, be a joke. You know how do you deal with that? Does he is he doing the right thing? Nah, I don't think he's doing the right thing. You know, but it's funny. But yeah, if but I'm not mad at him for reacting this way. You it's can't like, be mad at nobody. How, for how, how long way. can you now? The disrespect how he talk about the women, I don't miss with. Right, like it's a little he go a little too far. But how he talk about the women, but man, boys do get a little aggressive talking. Sometimes I hate them aggressive talking niggas like. You just gonna have to show me, big dog. Like all that aggressive talking do make people after a while be like, "Hey, what? You just beat up Derek Fisher?" Okay, bro. I was just about to say, "Come like, on, you man!" Did, all right, you beat up Derek Fisher, and it's been well recorded and stated. About and you kind of threw a ball at the goat. But what is that? But you beat up Derek Fisher, a very average looking man. That I would go and fight Derek Fisher without a problem. Kwame Brown, I'm gonna look at him a little bit differently. I'm gonna shoot him. Look at him a lot differently. But I'm looking at I'm looking at Derek Fisher like, all right, we can do this. Like, I just feel like like he should have kept it on the basketball tilt, but yeah, he was. A, that's what the personal jab is what got him the attention. Right. The one thing I don't like about Kwame doing, it's like every day, 
Now it's time for you to take that and go into you a podcast. Like, right. Go into you a book. Go yeah. into you a show. Be a business, man. Yeah, like, don't, every time, yeah, you know, <clears throat> you start going off on whoever that done said something to him now. When it's like, all right, bro, we get it. But he do got some people shook out here. Yeah. It is real life hey, major hey, people that's like That's the best gonna, part about this Kwame Brown stuff is that he really about this. He got like, a shook. Like Gilbert Arenas like was so quick to come out and say, Hey bro, hey, I don't want no problems. Like I this heard, is what I said about you, this is what I meant. Like the stories about him beating up twenty bodyguards with him and Joe his Joe Budden said, Be careful hey, what y'all say. Hey. He told them, boy, be careful what y'all say. I don't want no smoke from Hey, you. I don't want no problems with Kwame Brown. Man, I'm telling you, bro. Seven foot, two fifty, athletic. He called Skip Payless a pale face bitch. <laughs> <laughs> from a, a clip that somebody <laughs> sent him from years ago. Years ago. He was looking at anybody. Anybody. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you thought I won't go get to you, you yeah. pale face bitch? Yeah. I said, oh my God. Time Thank time you, Jalen Rose, for taking up for me. And this is something like in 2014. Like, like I knew cold this pizza wasn't. type. Like, I knew this wasn't something recent. Like, nah. I saw that and I was like, this ain't recent. Jalen no. Rose ain't talking about you right now. Not the way you talk. He about did me. on Jalen and Jacoby on their podcast part of their show. Because yeah. I listen to their podcast. They do 20 minutes a day on the early TV. And then the yeah. last 30 minutes more a little uncensored. Right. They talk about stuff they can't really talk about on TV. TV yeah. So they gave Kwame like, "Hey, right, Kenny, stop playing with that hairline." <laughs> Kenny, hey, like, I'm, sick, I'm sick of him and Doc Rivers. I can't stand him it. and Doc Rivers. That's it's, that's smeared marker, man. Hey, into you guys out here with these black blackbirds. Come on, man. I'm just gonna ask you: Are you, we, we, are you gonna die when it comes to that time? No, you gonna let it? You gonna let it flow? Hell yeah, hell yeah! I can't do this, man. The fuck, I look like fifty years old. With I ain't there. say fifty. I'm, I'm talking about like right now. Like let's say you start graying right now. At, at I got 30. two of them, two three of them. You gonna let it slide or you gonna? Hell yeah, let them hoes rock. That's how you feel. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Man, yeah, shit. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Man. I mean, I'm a pin to be bald, so I ain't really worried about the, like. I ain't got the hair like you. Like you got it. I, I'm looking at you. You looking healthy up top, brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey. I, I look, I, every time I go to the barber, I get depressed. Man. Like it's another <laughs> level of like depression. Like you really seeing yourself like fucking. You go to the board. I want that number twenty one. Hey, bro, it's a hot top fade, bro. Hey. I don't think I can make that work right Hey, fam, i never say that, though, bro. <laughs> hey, fam, I'm telling you, but it's it's another level, of, like, that's part of, like, being a man. That's different. Like, you see yourself deteriorate. Yeah, like, you can feel it your in your knees. Eyes. Like, you you feeling yourself deteriorate. Like, well, not for you. Up, I sound like popcorn. Nah, but y'all, y'all be, like, really working there. Like, I go to the weight room just to stay fit. Y'all niggas really work out. I like it. So, bro. for me... I like to like when I get up. Sometimes you gonna really hear me be oh like yeah. I can feel it in my back now. Like I'm yeah. getting oh like I'm scared to I'm scared to play football or basketball. Yeah, it's that type. Like yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen when I go out yeah. there because my knee feel loose. Yeah, that type yeah. like where you be like nah, I don't think I should be playing. Right, like that's 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 part of the reason why I don't respect them people that that was cold after high school. Yeah. Like, bro, you... You got a lot of nice you ligaments. Got a, you got a little... Like, <laughs> while y'all was marching in band, y'all didn't really have the same kind of, like... And get, and be wear happy, and tear to, on y'all happy to see my beat-up ass come what? out there so they can yell. What? And still don't really got that much of a step on me. Like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. I've seen a lot of people that, like, post-high school turn into, like, superstars. I'd be like, bro, I wish I didn't have the years of wear and tear on me. Hey, like, man, I'm... I, Shit, I don't took too many beatings, man. I don't, I don't lift too many weights. That's my problem. I don't got heavy, but nah, man, it's just it's crazy. You you hit it, that nail on the head when you said, you know, <laughs> "I'm scared to go hoop." Like real time, what are you finna go do? Like <laughs> shit, I'm scared to do anything. We go if I'm going up the steps, I feel it. It's just what come with it, man. When you getting older and you ain't doing nothing athletic like that no more, and I ain't never had nobody to train with or yeah. just be. A trainer too or train me. I ain't never had that. Well, it's the shit like like when we work out, like we want muscles. Right? That's that's the point. 
Like you want your body to look right when when you working. Yeah. Like for me, I done gave up on this whole ab thing. I've been fat and, and I've always been fat and it ain't never stopped nothing. So like I ain't never tripped off of it. I like the I like the part of like somebody look at me and they can tell I lift weights. Yeah. That's why I like that's like why I, that's why I like working out. Like yeah. there's a lot of ego involved in that, but I'm okay with it. Like that's also part of the Yeah, like, it's funny, y'all right? y'all challenges y'all be having. I'll be like, look at these big swallow boys. I just I just don't want nobody thinking they ain't out here. You know what I'm saying? Like don't think don't think it's sweet over here. I don't know why. Like in them lifting competitions. I'm, you know, it's like, kind of like that cooking thing with shoes. Like, like if we cooking and if we competing, then okay, I ain't gonna show you some some some, yeah. some noodles. I'm gonna show you like me hitting this three fifteen ten times. Like, what's up? Everything you ain't doing it because you ain't showing it. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. I'm like this too. Out. That's why I get a little. It's kind of like that playlist too. Like, like you thought it was bullshit. Nah, you, I you thought it was sick. because you. But I be forgetting you fold that computer like this. So. Yeah. These niggas out here, man, I can't do nothing on no Apple or iTunes thing. I was finna go old school and just put out a playlist. Yeah. Like, when niggas gotta go search the song, but that shit went, you came with all this, and you never lost. Hey. When I hear that never lost, I said, I woke up, I said, oh, Lord Jesus. Drop the tag Uh-oh. on the boys. He done, he done hit me with that cinema. Yes, sir. Hey, you know me, I can't come out there half-stepping. So tell me this. Talk to him. Right now, you being into all this sports, we all into this. You can't tell me, bro, that sports is just not weird now, man. Just in general. Like, look at this. Look at this game right now. Look at this playoff game. Yeah. Look at the, look at just like, look at the Super Bowl last year. Just spread out, like. Oh, you talking about without the fans? Yeah, it's just, I. It's some of, but I'm because I'm such an antagonist. I used to love when I hear somebody boo me. Yeah. Like it ain't nothing, ain't no better feeling than taking the ball can out. I turn it, can I turn into a conspiracy, brother? What? This is like uh, watching the shit turn. You know, you always get the movies that talk about some shit that happens in the future, and the year will be twenty twenty three or something like that, mm-hmm. and it'll come out in twenty twelve. And shit is totally different. Motherfuckers is wearing masks and like they can't come outside. It's martial law outside. Like the I am legend shit. Yeah. Like they always talk about here in the near future. It ain't never too far away. Yeah. And like it's kind of crazy if I'm also conspiracy brother shit. Like seeing these games without crowds, that could be like the first sign of like some shit finna happen. Like boom, this is it. I can remember this shit slowly happening. Like, these motherfuckers went from playing in full arenas to no fans, a bubble, a little bit of fans, and then all of a sudden now they playing in bubbles again. And you'll never see basketball play with fans again. Like, like on some conspiracy, like, wow, this could happen. Like, I, believe, I feel like we watching that shit kind of deteriorate right as we freaking speak. I hope not, man. I hope not either. It just turns me out to – there's no emo- – I play with emotion when I'm doing something. Absolutely. You know I did. So okay. it's hard for me to – it never was easy for me to do practices and stuff. There's yeah. nothing to me. There's no emotion in it. Right. I know who I'm playing. Y'all know my plays. I know y'all play. It's cool. But, man, them games, man, it's something about – it's something about, like, before tailgate, before you going to uh, – Opposing crowd and they throwing up they whole little signs of they school yeah. while you driving in or that's, I don't know I just love that well, shit and it, I miss that I shit. think that just speaks to the volumes of just how much and how special high school high school sports are yeah because it's this whole thing took away from that like that experience like the and, game didn't even feel right nah. I you say think it's just fans more bougie now? That's absolutely what it is. You, you, my you, God, you go a long, long, long game view. is boring. Longy fans are bougie. I, I've, I've been on record for saying that. Like they don't show up until the playoffs. They don't get rowdy until the playoffs. 
it don't get lit until we make it to the third round. It's like it's almost like we gotta meet y'all standards before y'all show up and show it's up. It's like playing for the Lakers or Man, something. Yeah, like real life. It's like long view fans are like Cowboy fans. They like Lakers bro, fans. Bro, I'll say like, I sit back. I read the forums. The forums, bro. These mo- these boys go so hard. Like nah, they being they in the stands to hear what some Ooh, of these. Man, I, you, you got would think. You got 80 John you, Maddens. You would think Tony and Dez, and you would think Jason Witten was on the that field, man. Everybody in the crowd know the best play. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it's usually to their kinfolk with oh, their kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'd be out there like, who I could imagine. But see, that's what, makes us, that's what makes Longview football so great. Yeah. Because there is that connection to it. A movie about a movie – about that 2018 team, yeah. that that'll be the real. That's Friday night. If they Lights, can tell the real Lights story team. behind the 2018 team, if they can really go into these boys' lives and really show y'all was how they was living and what they was living and what they was doing and how they was doing it. Mm-hmm. Like if you could really go into it, but see that's different. You ain't ready for that. Yeah. You know the way y'all was. I know how the way y'all was living in high school. These boys are doing the same shit. It's it, it's gonna be that every year because at the end of the day that's, that's we all saying. go back to the same area to the that's same mama's what. got the same job. Yeah, it it don't matter how how many more Adidas or Nikes y'all put on out there, bro. Yeah, you coming it, home? You to coming the same home thing. to them hot links and them ramen noodle sticks? Yeah. Yeah. You still mama gonna eat a cold cut and let you eat the meal today? Cause yeah. she want baby to get her nutrition for the season. Right, that's just how it's gonna be. So regardless of how big the eyes are on you on Friday, if ain't nobody putting no eyes on them kids on Tuesday yeah. or Wednesday or that's Thursday, what, that's what make it so special. You gonna man. catch our class. That's what make it so special. Yeah, man. man. Like that's the real backstory behind this. You know, professional athletes. You know what they go home to. They yeah. fuck it off. They just fuck it off. That's their fault. Bro, college man. kids, like even the college kids, like yeah, some come home hungry, but like if you if you really on scholarship, you ain't got no reason to really just be like like that. Like, bro, like them chick for light sandwiches with that soggy ass pickle. We used to talk about it, but them hoes used to touch our soul because we didn't eat chick for late. <laughs> exactly. Other than if we got it from there and had the shit on it just to make yourself feel right about eating it. Bro, Wendy's used to be a big deal. Yeah, like. We going to Wendy's? <laughs> like, yeah. like, Wendy's was a big deal. Not to say that we ain't. Mama would take me out to eat, like, for a report card yeah. once every, like, blue moon. But right. I know what time it was. Like, yeah. hey, that cafeteria meal, they fix it for us before we go sit in this Lobo den. Yeah. I'm finna execute. Yeah. Bring me that garlic bun. That's a hamburger bun. <laughs> Bring it here. Give me that. Hey, I hope I get a little slice of cheese in this chicken and spaghetti. You know what? What? What really? I I figured out what parents go through. Being a coach helped, like, cause I saw some. I saw some. I've been seeing some shit. Mm-hmm. I know a dude who smelled like his house. Mm-hmm. So he ain't got no choice. You don't know if he really musty or if he just like he ain't got no choice but to smell like that. Cause I went and picked him up and I was like, oh my god, mm-hmm. I know why. So I've seen that style of life. You know, I I've seen. You know, parents that go all the way, 100 for their child, 150, yeah. knowing they wrong, but they still go all the way for them and talk bad to people knowing their kid act a fool. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen that. And then having my own kid, now I understand it. Mm-hmm. I understand the sacrifices people got to make for a kid. I understand ready to fight somebody over a kid even though you know your kid was wrong because I know how it is to love something that much. Mm-hmm. Like, my kid can't do no wrong. Like, I know what it's like to feel that way. Yeah. I know I can't raise them that way, but I but I understand when a person does it. Like, having, like, changing, my, that, that whole thing changing my whole perspective. So, like, when I look at these kids now, it's like, damn, now I really care for kids. My first four or five years of coaching, I care for kids, but I ain't really just care for kids. Yeah, had that passion like you thought you were supposed right, to. Right, right. Now it's it's a different love now that I have my own son. Yeah. Because now I'm looking at these kids like they my own son. So now I'm looking at them. How are we talking to these? How am I talking to these kids now? Yeah. I used to talk to them however and never really think about it. Then you get it. to give them something that you wish. Not to say the coaches you had didn't do the right things for you, but Maybe you know add on to what you, you know might have needed. Yeah, you like, know the difference. Like, yeah, okay, 
Oh well, I ain't gonna say the name, but it was certain coaches that they weren't there the whole time long. They had left and went other places. It was one coach in particular I knew he didn't really care about. You know what I'm saying? What he was doing, he more worried about the baseball element. So yeah. cool, like I get it, man. Yeah. Like I wasn't never mad at that. Like I got it. That like I'm probably not what you really cool with. You know what I'm saying? And I understood that. But some coaches, you really. Could tell they really curd, like you yeah. know what I'm saying. Like somebody for me, like Coach Berry, that was somebody I always know. He curd, like when he see us at Addy Red, and he had got tears in his eye because he ain't seen us all in a long mm-hmm. time. That's somebody who curd, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. some coaches see you and be like, ah, I'm so yeah. care, like, man, shut up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you don't care about it. you don't care about you don't it. feel me like how you yeah feel you me. don't. I might have looked at you and wanted to talk to you for a second, see how your life going. But as soon as you said that, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. It no just thanks. go like that, man. And I ain't got no problem with none of the coaches or nothing like that. I just know that growing up, just going through difficult. I'm not speaking on just Longview. I'm speaking on like all my colleges. Yeah. It's certain coaches who was there to continue to go up. And it was there that it was it was coaches. It's a difference between being there to try to rise or knowing you gonna rise just by your coaching. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And yeah, it's, some of them different than it. Yeah, and I think I think that's for me is like the challenge. Like I didn't understand how to be a coach. Like I thought it was just teaching plays at first, but now like the challenge is like, how do I get you to look at the game? That's how I want, that's that's how I know if I'm really coaching or not. Yeah. Because a good coach gonna make me look at the game differently. Yeah. He gonna make me say like, oh, this ain't just about learning what you do on fifty six. This is more about what you gonna do when these boys start making adjustments. And you know what a great coach gonna do? Talk to me. He gonna change you as a man. Yeah. No that's, doubt. That's what my coach at Nickel State coach Anderson. He coached at Virginia now. Man was a he like a Mormon. He got like six kids, like you know what I'm saying. Michael baby every year, yeah. Type Michael yeah. Michael Colt type fan <laughs> went to BYU, like just a white guy who just and really showed me like it's some okay white people out here. To be honest, like yeah, me even though you know it, cause we you know we play for some white coaches that's good guys. You know what I'm saying? But it's like when you go to college and don't run across a couple. Of, you don't know, then you find him, like, he started teaching me how to get more, like, discipline. He always yeah. said, pay attention to the detail. That's right. one That's one thing that stuck with me my whole life when it comes to people, relationships, jobs. He always said, pay attention to the details, because that ain't something I never did. I yeah. just live life, wake up, let's get it. Man, when he started doing that, it that made me start honing in on little stuff. Made football easy and also made me start changing as a man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Need That's what that. made him a great coach. Need that. Because he that. didn't really teach me that much about. Man, I'm be honest. He's a white coach that was like a blocking wide receiver. He right. didn't teach me no sauce. Right. He couldn't teach us how to do no rest. Only thing he was trying to do get us to play hard. We exactly. Like, get out get, get out of our face. We want, some, right. we want some balls. But he couldn't do on the biggest pause. Yeah, I, I heard that. <laughs> well, I heard that I was going to be mature, but then no, I was like, nah, no, ma- no maturity with that. Yeah. Show him my stuff. Give that man everything I got. Pause. Pause? Pause what? You said something gay, so you got to say no homo, or else you the homo. Hey, man. I don't know if I know that hey, man. Shout out to the LGBT community. Nah. And that's not the coach speaking. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> No, nah, we not gonna do that. We not gonna shout nobody out after that statement. Nobody just getting shouted out. I don't want to send any bad messages. I don't want anybody to be misconstrued right, about, about what goes you're, on you're, around you're, here. You're, you're, you're so no, we not shouting hey, them out right now. Nah, we respect can't to y'all, y'all people. Respect. Don't don't do don't do that hate hey, shit. But uh, nah, nah. Well, I'm telling nah. you, I'm telling you the the. It's well documented how I get down, so I ain't worried about it. Understood. Understood. Mm. Yeah, Julius Randle. He about that. He he the king of New York right now. At the at the current man, I would I I remember going to New York, and because I've been such a basketball fan my whole life, I you remember. You had to go to the court. I had I, my my hotel was right down the street. I just had to touch it. Giannis was playing that night. It was too late for me to get any tickets. Yeah. 
Man, I touched it. Man, bro, the Madison Square Garden, bro, is not even big from the outside because it's no, underground. TG Fields? That whole, like, like you just, it's underground. It's just a big circle. It's, it's smaller than what you could say that Austin, how that Frank Irvin Center yeah, yeah, yeah. is built like that, but, yeah. it, like, it's smaller. Or, like, how the Superdome kind of in the ground. Yeah. Man, bro, but that whole small. You could walk around that thing in one block. Nah, the boys done put on in the garden. Yeah, man. That was the worst miss I've seen today, though. That, yeah, that, that shit was tough. Was, that was a dream. I got to go find that so I can attach that to the, uh, the video for that because that, that shit was trash. But, uh, so tell me this, man. Pause that real quick. Hold that thought. I got to piss like a monkey. All right, so before we get out of here, I got something that I want to hear uh, because I'm super interested in, in what the hell this man can say right now. Uh, I don't know if I want to jump in this either, but right now, uh, give us one tip, one relationship advice from Juice. This does not have to be anything specific. It doesn't have to be for like a specific situation in a relationship, but just like, just drop some of that juice on us and uh, pause, big pause, but drop some of that knowledge on us about, you know, what what, what could a fella do to, to make a female feel, feel, feel good about him? I'm I'm gonna give you two. Ah, oh, shit, we getting I'm double. I'm gonna give you two. We gonna man. get a double post right now. I need that double dose. You know, uh, I'm gonna give you a tip, fellas, for when you first meet a woman. Don't show her what you got in your pocket. Don't show her what you got on your debit card. Knowledge, knowledge. This is what I need you to do. Do something that shows effort. Cook her a meal. Also, cook something that you like. Because guess what? A woman ain't going to eat that much in front of you. Boom. You just save some money. Ooh. Ooh. So guess what you got money for right now, though? A nice bottle. You ain't got to get New Amsterdam. You can get the good stuff. Oh, shit. Because you just save some money on the food. Because right now, you're not showing her your money. You don't want her to get your money. All right. Show her how you are at, at home. And guess what you do? Get a get a nice and slizzard. Flirt with her and then tell her, Are you ready to go home? So then she don't think you don't want the booty. You could be horny as hell. Yeah. But you can't do it. Yeah. Don't go for it. Don't do it. I was just gonna ask you, how aggressive are you on this on this first first don't do it. chill don't do session? It. Don't do it. And because and it's called I want it everybody is. to know this. Yeah. This is not from experience. This has all been re- uh I read this out of a book before. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. That is, this is all out of a book. Yeah. So, when you're doing that, man, that would be my first tip. Do that and then just, then you might see if you want to start spending money on dates and trips and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second. So, hold on, before you jump into number two, I got to throw just my own penny out there. Talk to me. Not really two cents, but just one penny. Just a, a, a question, or not even a question. How much, like, figuring out should I be trying to do, you know, if if I want to, like, how much of this, I'm going into it with the mindset of, do I want to spend money on this one? Mm-hmm. So how much, I need to talk, I need to let her talk. I think it's depending on your mindset. Are you trying to, you looking at this woman for a relationship or yeah, somebody? You, this, you got to figure that out. Okay. So if you're looking for a relationship, for me, I like low maintenance. How many dates before you figure out? You know what? That, that's a that's a range because it depends on the time. It, you might have a woman that's, y'all not in the same city. Right. Or y'all might both be busy. Yeah. She might have a child. You might not have a child. You right. might have a child. She might not have one. Yeah. All that going in. Or y'all might be both in the same shit yeah. and be with each other a lot so where it get tight fast. Right. It's just how it go. Like, yeah. it all depends. For me, that's what I would say as far as they go because I've had women in the past where the first thing that they start doing after you done did your thing with them a couple of times. Oh, man, I'm just having a bad day. Oh, why you have a bad day? These bills. Oh, yeah. I feel like a nap. Uh, I'll hit you back later. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I already know what their time is. Right. You know what I'm saying? And when you start getting that going, or they start like, I don't know, man. It's just, first of all, you got to know who you want to spend your money on because you got sisters and you got family and a mama and yeah. daddy that you got to think about what they, how would they feel if you spend this, all this money on this woman just to hit the booty? You sure? Better go buy her some chicken breasts and fry them things up <laughs> and make her think she, like, the mashed potatoes going to be homemade. Now, you're right about the effort part. Yeah, but yeah. you still showing effort. Like, yeah. it takes effort to get off of work, work 10, 12 hours, invite somebody over, cook a meal for them, yeah. make sure that whatever y'all might do, yeah. whatever vice and you might do. And if she don't understand or appreciate that kind of effort, that let you know right off the top that this ain't it's what you need. not for me because what you need. you're not getting no uh, Louis Vuitton bag from me off of no two dates, baby girl, Ooh. because you're fine. I work for mine. Hey, and also, you going to show me I'm a king like I'm going to show you you a queen. Yeah. Off top. And that might just be for me. I you go, uh... You got twenty dollars, baby. I know you be getting haircut, and then guess what? My shit costs more than that. But right, I'm gonna put that. I like that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. So, and them the ones you always keep around. So yeah, I take them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what's the second one I was finna say? I don't know. We never got into it. Oh, I threw you off. Number two. The number two thing that I would always say is, if you have a woman that you like, and before you first start a relationship, these are a couple signs that I would tell you, do not go for it. All ears. Number one, if she gets to on social media and posts y'all before speaking on her life situations, you might want to move around. Because she's too into social media and she's going to take stuff from social media and believe that you're supposed to do the same things. Don't attack social media, Juice. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Them are the ones that still in 2021 want the pictures together and things of that nature. Yeah. Also, and guess what? This is relationship advice from the worst relationship guy in America. All right, Juice, we're going in the sleepers. We're going to get out of here. Uh, introduce your sleeper. We're going to let that play one time, and then we're going to get out. Well, you know, this is one of the artists that I've been listening to this last year. Uh, my favorite artist right now. Um, be looking for him in about a year or two to be the best rap artist in the world. Now, ESTG, Three Phones. Three Phones, ESTG. Carry these so uh sleeper right here. Forever rolling. Watch where I don't make. I got three phones, one for hoes, halves, and quarters. In the door, I keep my pointers back for shooters and snorters. Back when money was shorter, shorty ain't won't let me torture. Now I shoot it on her forehead and don't pay her a quarter. Wasn't meant, but I forced it. Had to get with the sources. Swear out of ship niggas' mortgage. I bought it in, gave out portions. I supply and enforce it. I'm the guy, gave them water. Living hell gave you water. They'll kill you for joy. Doja. If I give him extra, we can roll it over Meet the quota, serving all on papers Pistol out the holster Niggas know that I'm a soldier No love for all my opposers Front and quarters, I'ma get it right And not a nugget over Couple folders, up repeat my plays I'm going through the motions Bro gon' shoot, he thank he Corva Three at once, he thank he Ori Two, two, threes, he thank he Jordan Never made it off his corner Never came at me with shorts So up and downs, I'm going to support him Pumping pounds from here to Florida Bust it down with my supporters Couple grand to get him tortured Stuffing grams I made a fortune, made a fortune. driving be there in the morning. in the morning. I bring in the biggest portions, the biggest, the biggest portions. niggas get hit with 45 yeah. phones. I got, I got, yeah. I got three phones, one for hoes, halves, and quarters. In the door, I keep my pointers back for shooters and snorters. Back when money was shorter, shorty ain't won't let me torture. Now I shoot it on her forehead and don't pay her a quarter. Wasn't meant, but I forced it. Had to get with the sources. Swear out of ship niggas' mortgage. I bought it in, gave out portions. I supply and enforce it. I'm the guy, gave them water. Living hell gave you water. They'll kill you for joy. Uh, 
Nigga, please, plug talk, he speak Vietnamese. I just nod and look him in his eyes, cause he gon' send him peace. He say, Jorge, you do good with weed, but can you handle keys? And his hits pending, some nigga ran off with 60 G's. He know that I need the money, he knows that I'm with the shit, but some ain't right. Think he might be trying to put me in a twist. First time thought calling it quits, I can sense it ain't the same. I've been out here dancing with the devil, I'm starting to feel the flame, but this my plug, and I love him more than Jesus. He told me I'm a genius, but play stupid to them people. It's an art to be yeah. deceitful. Never let Never a nigga know. read you. If he peep you, he can beat you. I can feed you if I need to. Yeah. Once again, I want to thank Coach Spence. It's always a privilege to be here. It oh, could. Man, hold on, don't, don't shut it down just yet. Don't shut it down just yet. I got to sleep with myself. Oh, my bad, my yeah, bad. Yeah. I ain't want to. I ain't want to nah. leave without thanking nah, my nah, fellow nah, nah, brother. Nah. You good, you good, bro. I got one more. I got to sleep with myself, and I'm probably finna fuck up the podcast because we've been really chilling on some some fellowship. But I'm an R and B type of dude. I can't help it. Sleeper for me uh, came out on the Superfly uh, album, the movie, the soundtrack. Remember, Superfly was a bust. Nobody watched it. I didn't even watch the movie, but I heard I the soundtrack. The movie. Uh, but Miguel, R A N, real ass nigga. So I want to play that one time because I'm just an R and B type of dude. That's just my vibe. Like it's always been that way for me. I ain't mad at it. And so hey, hey, so it's it's my it's my podcast, right? Yeah, I can yeah. put it exactly. So, absolutely. So here's here's Miguel. All right, you broken record left on repeat. Another build up to the let down, let down, steady speed into a new pain. Tragic collision on a 110. And my wish that you would slow down. Cause maybe then you see it coming. I'm saying. Childish nigga yeah. right there. Hey. Over here. <laughs> so, and, yeah. and Spencer older than me. I mean, younger than me, man. So, yeah. I'm so childish. So, yeah, that's what that was. Uh, man, it's on there now. It's too late. I, it's that time I need to go into a reception right now. A reception? What's your, what kind that of was a wedding, wedding reception? reception. <laughs> hey, it was. I told you it was R&B, fam. I ain't mad at it. Hey, I need to get lane. in my bag. It hey, really sounded good, though. Yeah, nah, it's, it's, it's a dope, it's, it's it's it. a dope little song. But yeah, man, we finna get out of here. Uh, we've been talking about an hour, so that's decent. That's decent for us. We don't need to be talking about three hours, man. Yeah, man, we get the point across, man. And I'm only here for a second. You know, I gotta get back up that road, but I was right. down here, man. Like I said, I appreciate the opportunity. 
This is the best platform to be on in East Texas in this world. I appreciate and, it. And you know what I'm saying? I appreciate if it. If I could come back every day, I would. But we we going to get it going. We yeah. going to keep it going. Now, this, and, is, this is dope. I, yeah. feel like, I feel like people will respect what we got coming in. And yeah. we're only going to get you better at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, man. Like, this the coach and juice, man. Coach and juice. That ain't nothing better than that. Nah, I don't think you can get you, too much better. Come than on, that. man. That coach, was, and that coach drinking juice while he at it. You, you know what I'm saying? You so hear me? It's a good relaxed time over here, over this way. So. And at all times, as I always say, this is their life, big baby. Yes, sir. Shout out to Ricardo one time. I ain't even hit my dog. Big Cannon. I ain't talked to the Cannon in a minute, but uh, shout out to Ricardo. He's still, he's still good over here. I don't know if y'all, y'all, still, y'all know how like, y'all, y'all I like still, I still got to do some stuff with Ricardo, man. Yeah, you know how That's people like to be messy. They'll think, they'll, think, they'll think something of it. Something nah, it better not, man. Yeah, better not. Better man. not. Better not. But yeah, so uh, I think that's it. All right, man. I'll holler at y'all. I'm out.